Let's start with the slide deck. I'm not going to be in the slide deck very long, probably. Um, but I have a, a data package that I'm actually working on right now about to get ready to submit to CRAN. So I figured let's talk about that. That makes sense in this. All right. So this week, uh, we are talking about how do I include things like data and do obscure packagey things. Um, this was originally two weeks. One week was going to be all about obscure packagey things, but despite there are quite a few like learning objectives that I called out for this, but these are very, very much chapters that you should know exist and look them up when you need them. Um, but I'm going to talk about some of the common use cases and that kind of thing. Um, and then we'll dive in and play around with it. All right. Oops. So lots of stuff in chapter 14, but it's, uh, it's just a long list of just read the chapter and do it when you need to do it. Um, there are three main ways that data is like included in the package. You can have uh, exhorted data or better known as exported data. So there, that's a typo. Um, exported data, which is goes into your data folder at the top of your package. You can have internal data, which goes in r slash sysdata.rda in your package. And you can have raw data that you want to have ac accessible by users, which goes in that um, install folder, inst slash xdata. Um, he talks in here about lazy data, that is just data that doesn't, uh, when you have lazy data set to two, true, the data doesn't load until you use it, um, which is partially what we were talking about before the presentation started. Um, and the idea is just, it doesn't go into RAM. So you don't, when you library the package, you don't bloat the, uh, your RAM if you have a bunch of data. Um, but the important part of all this is use this, use data raw and use this, use data. Use this, use data raw sets up the data raw uh, folder where you can like uh, create whatever data set you're going to use, either internal or, ex or either exported or internal. Um, and then from that file that you create with use data raw, you use use data to actually either export the data or use it internally. And we'll come back and look at that in a minute. Um, if you are exporting data, you should document it with Roxygen 2. Um, I'll, I'll show a demo of this in a minute too, but the idea is you write a relatively normal Roxygen block and then below that block, you just have the name of the data set in quotes and that will document the data set. Um, again, we'll take a look at these special tags, format and source, but the format lets you uh, provide basically a data dictionary for the data set and source lets you tell people where you got the data. Um, Let's see, yeah, internal equals true to add internal data and uh, raw data goes in that X data fo folder. Um, you can load it with system.file, yada, yada. Like I, I guess I should probably get all the way to the end, but the idea, again, the point is read the chat, like use the chapter as a reference when you're working with data because it's just, it's a good reference. It's, oh, okay, now that you're doing this, use this step. Um, you can put data for tests, I guess, to, to wrap it up. You can put data for tests right in the test that folder. Um, you can put data for vignettes all over the place. Depends how you're going to use that data. Um, I'm interested to see if this changes on the rewrite because you can also just put it in the vignettes folder. So I'm not sure. Oh, I guess I guess they wouldn't. It wouldn't necessarily be there in the actual package. So never mind. Yeah, you want to put it in that X data most of the time. Um, and that also holds for data that's used in examples in your documentation. You need to put it somewhere so that it exists. I think any time I've wanted that, I've just exported those data sets from the package because why am I using them as examples and not making them available as easy to use examples? So there's that. Um, and then actually one of my most useful things that I had completely forgotten was here is they have these check RDA files and resave RDA files functions um, that can optimize the compression for package data because as he's, you know, as I'm reading about it, I see that some of this data that I'm working with is a little large. It's a data package, so that's okay. 
Um, I was like, oh, maybe I didn't compress it right. So, and I was able to use the tools, check RDA files to find, yeah, the, the data I'm working with, um, the default compression is fine. So I just blew through that, but now I'm going to hop over to, let's see, to, oops, uh, in theory, where, what do I need to click to unshare? There, where is the, there it is, stop sharing and share the other, uh, share this package. Wait, I had a question about uh, sure. system, system.file. Where does that read from? Is that inst? Yes. So, okay, um, to back up. So that inst directory, um, everything that's in that directory actually gets copied one level up when you install the package. So within the package, you would have a folder X data, so inst slash X data. And then you can say system.file um, X data, the name of the data source, package equals whatever package it is, and it'll load that data set. Um, but again, that's only if you're doing like not R formatted data, because if, like, if you want to put an, an Excel spreadsheet in there or a CSV or whatever, because if you're going to actually R format it, just put it in data and actually put it in data raw and process it into data. Um, I've never had a reason to put anything in inst. I've had multiple data packages, but I don't need, like, I haven't seen a reason to include, um, like, completely raw data. So, for example, this would be something where maybe I would want to include raw data. There was a project um, a few years ago now, but it's potentially useful for some NLP stuff that we're working on where it was a um, like linguistics project to break English words up into the, their component morphemes, the meaning pieces. And this project has a huge um, Excel spreadsheet on GitHub. Um, it's actually uh, the original um, GitHub project has a CC BY license. And we talked about last week that if something CC BY, it needs to be like GPL and up as far as um, the type of license that it supports. So since I needed to work with this stuff in R, I decided I'll make this package that is just a data package and is CC BY and it just contains the data and then I can use the package within other, other work and not have to worry about that, um, that licensing. So, um, so this is an example. Let me go ahead and um, start from the console. The, the thing we're looking at here, like we are, I started with use this, use data raw, oops. Um, and you can say name, and I would say, let's say Morpholex. And I'm gonna not actually hit enter because I already did this file, but that what that does is that creates this data raw folder if it doesn't exist. Um, and actually I'll just do this, uh, other. So it sets the active project, okay. Um, it creates the data raw folder if it doesn't exist. It adds this file to the data raw folder and it opens it for you. And then it also puts um, data raw into your build ignore. Um, I think that's all the things it does, but you know, use this as usual, just kind of takes care of all the stuff and creates this file for you uh, that you use to set up your data set. So in this case, I have my Morpholex thing um, and I just have logs of <laughs> where it is. I actually fixed some typos in his spreadsheet. So right now I'm actually pointing at my PR into his repo. Um, and I load this Excel spreadsheet, do some processing, yada, 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 process, process, process. Um, and then there's this use this function, use data that if I load that up, um, you just tell it the object. So object or objects, you can do several things within one file. So here I'm doing this Morpholex object. Um, it's not internal, it's, it, it is 
what I want to export from this package. And I set it, or by default, uh, use data raw, set this over right equals true. What that means is I can go ahead and like rerun this right now and it reruns and saves over that, um, that file. I have never not wanted overwrite to be true. I don't know. I guess if I don't want to screw up old versions of it or something, I might set overwrite to be false. Um, yeah. So that's that. Any any questions? Like it's pretty straightforward. It, it the complex part, of course, is whatever data processing you have to do. Um, but I'm sure I ran through that super fast, so people may have questions. Could you could you use like a data raw uh, script, kind of as an alternative to like a vignette for an analysis package? Like, what's your opinion on that? Um, you could. So uh, the reason not to would be, and actually, I have definitely started that way before in different cases. Um, the reason I would say not to is you lose the explanation. I mean, you know, you can have comments, but you lose the pretty explanation of how things came together. Um, but that that can totally make sense. And then, you know, basically your export at the end of the package is the clean data set. Um, there are cases where that definitely makes sense. So, yes. <laughs> Does it? I thought data raw doesn't get like by the, the, the default to data raw means that it doesn't get packed into. Right. So you, uh, you would only like the, the history or the explanation of how you do the data processing would then only live in the GitHub repo, not in the package. Um, yeah. So yeah, that absolutely. That is part of why I like to do it in the vignette because then it lives in the package. Um, but if it's just for an internal project, like the difference between having access to the GitHub repo and having access to the package can be pretty small. Um, so that can work in some cases, depending on your use case, for sure. Um, all right. I'm going to nuke that other one before I forget. <laughs> And then the other piece of this, so, okay, I've got this data set, I process it, I did the use this and it saved it. What, what happens when I run this is it goes to this data folder as an RDA. And then when you library the package or when someone, like if I do uh, Morpholex, Morpholex, this is now, um, it's technically just a data frame, but it, uh, if you have things loaded, it loads a, a tibble and it's got all the data in it. And I'm still actually fighting back and forth with myself of whether I want to clean up his column names for this raw, ver quote unquote, raw version, because I hate the way that he uh, named his columns, but whatever. So that, I mean, I guess that does take me to, I've got this data documentation file and in here, so there's the, you know, you just put Morpholex in quotes and then above that, a relatively normal Roxygen 2 block. Um, you have the title and the description of the, um, that data set. And actually, while we're looking at that, let's load it up in our studio. Right. And so, um, I just went through and I copied his data dictionary, which has all of these descriptions of what everything is. Um, and then just you wrap it in this at format, um, it says basically what it is and then describe and each one is an item. And those items become these entries in the help. Um, Uh, source, you can re reference a URL. I referenced the, the GitHub repo, and then he also has a reference for the paper. So I went ahead and included that reference. Um, and that's it. I, then I've got another one 
that I'm still processing exactly how I want it to do, but it's more, I take his raw data and make it a more usable data set. Um, but again, just document what I do within that. Um, I'm still referencing it so that whatever help you look at, you see their paper because I do want to give them credit. They did this cool um, thing they, where they take 70,000 English words and break them down by meaning pieces. Um, so yeah, that, that's the data chapter. Um, there's not a lot to it. And again, it's a, when you need it, it's one chapter, go look at the chapter. Um, it's very short. All of these chapters are very short. Any other questions? That was a good one, Tony. <laughs> All right. So I go back here. I go to. Wait, did you really type out all that oxygen, or uh, did you copy it? Uh, no, 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 I copy pasted, and then I had to fix the wrapping around things. Um, I, you know, I was like, I was like this close to writing a function to paste into to put the slash item and whatever, but it was easy enough to just copy paste into uh, or cut and paste from the raw thing into the, the pretty. And actually, this is a very good case where. Um, Actually, let's undo this. So what I should have done, if I load the, oh, I've got the spreadsheet handy. So I'll just load the spreadsheet. I think I have it in there. And the spreadsheet has the dictionary. Which I don't think you can see, but whatever. I'm going to copy it. Yeah. So, um, you know, when I, when I paste it in, it's that, but this is an excellent use of um, our studio's crazy multi-cursor thing. And I can do that and at least get that part of it all set up and then just have to fill in some other pieces along the way, but you can at least do the start of it all at once. Um, but yeah, I just went through and, you know, copy pasted the, uh, like that and just whatever, oops, et cetera. Um, I'm sure there are faster ways to do that, but yeah. Uh, and then now that I've done that, like I said, I think I'm going to end up um, making the, the column names tidy. It really, really bothers me that one of my column names has an asterisk in it. Like, it's hard to reference that column in the data set. Um, so, so if we look at, oops, uh, you know, to actually type that, you have to put the um, ticks around it and everything. And, and actually most of them are NAs anyway, but yeah. Anything else? Just on janitor clean names on it. Yeah, I know. I, um, I'm actually not sure what janitor clean names will do to that asterisk. I'm interested to see, but uh, I don't think I have janitor on this laptop right now, actually. Boo. I know. I don't do it. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah, I don't, I don't do much of any data processing on this machine, except I'm, I've been doing this package. So, um, so yeah, that, that went through basically everything. And this one, um, you know, it's uh, 1.1 megabytes, and he says it shouldn't be over one megabyte, except this is a data package. I think it'll be okay. I hope it's going to be okay. Um, so, but I did do the check RDA files, hoping that I could squeeze out that one, that 0.1 megabyte. There are tricks if you go read, um, I don't remember where I found it when I Googled it a couple years ago, because I had a giant, giant data set, but I wanted it in a package for easier use. I didn't care about CRAN, but I didn't want it to be gigantic. And you can make it so that um, at installation, it takes like a feather file and creates the RDA um, in the package. I don't remember how to do it. It is something that if anyone's really interested, you can ask me about it on the Slack and I'll go dig for the information. Um, and he says, like he, in the, in the chapter, he says something like, usually you save this as an RDA. 
something like that. Um, and it is, you know, 99% of the time you, you can, but I wanted something more lightweight uh, for the transport of the package. So I, I played around with that once before. Um, yes. All right. So the next, next chapter um, is all about RCPP. And I'm, I added in here because I don't know if people have been keeping up, but the tidy tidyverse team now has their own RCPP basically. So I strongly suspect that this chapter, if it survives into the new edition is also going to talk about CPP 11 quite a bit. Um, again, I wrote a bunch of learning objectives here, but unless you have a use for this, the learning objective is just know that this chapter exists. And then when you're working with C++, open that chapter in a window and use it as a reference. Um, it is good to go through and read through some of the um, uh, best practices, things to watch out for. But again, if you're not actively working with C++, you're not gonna learn much from those. Um, I don't know, did anyone have like anything, oops, that really, uh, that they're taking away from this chapter or that they'll um, have anything to do with in this chapter? And I just realized that there's all kinds of stuff in the chat. No, that, I mean, I guess I learned the difference between .c and .call. Yeah, um, I, I actually did like that, um, that part, but um, like, I feel like I need to go back and forth between this chapter and the advanced R chapter whenever I work on C, well, I say that. I just did my first C++ work in like literally, um, what, 20, 26 years, something like that, uh, the other day, um, because I wanted to, <laughs> basically because a, um, a piece of a package was broken it's just a little side piece in the package, but um, there's a sentence, sentence piece package, which includes the word piece algorithm, um, which is Google's way of breaking up uh, words into using a dictionary. Um, and so like it, the idea is you give it some sentences or some phrases, whatever, and a little dictionary and it'll break it up into pieces. Um, but it was actually wrong. Um, and honestly, right now, I can't remember how it was wrong. I fixed this a few weeks ago and it was very much, I download, you know, I forked the package, downloaded it, um, dealt with the fact that our studio hates something in here, but I don't know enough C++ to understand why that's, um, freaking out because it works. Um, and just kind of experimented. Um, it was totally a, it was like an off by one error. And so I had to just kind of tweak through here and go, oh, okay, wait, is it length minus one or should that be length? Should that be uh, length plus one maybe? And it was it was uh, a nice way to get back into C++ that I hadn't done in a million years. Um, and that has been PR'd into the package now. So it works. Um, but it was interesting to, to walk through and find these cases, like why, trying to find why it didn't work. Um, and I think it was, oh yeah, it was leaving the, uh, it was leaving the exclamation point off the end. And I don't need the extra version of it, but um, actually, hmm. So, which it still is doing. Oh, because the, whatever, the only, they only had, um, it wasn't the exclamation point because normally the exclamation point would get broken out in a separate step. Um, oh, 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 it was missing. It, it always missed the first, uh, the first token, no matter what it was. And so that was bad. It doesn't work very well if it doesn't include the first token. Um, but anyway, again, it was, it's very much a matter of just find a place to try it and don't start from scratch until you've done it a little bit, use someone else's package as something to work on and do it. Um, I didn't have to do any of the documentation stuff because 
again, I was just tweaking existing code. Um, but I know like the, the main thing in there is that you use these slash slash um, uh, references for, for exporting. And you can also do some documentation in there. But then it is called from within a, an actual R function, um, which actually, I'm not sure where the actual call is. Let's see. Hmm. There's no dot call or dot C in there. So maybe that's not the one that does it. Uh, or let's do this. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the one. So, right, right. Okay. He has internal functions that are called from the function. So that, that right there, word piece and code as subwords is a function that does the call to the, um, the C code, C++ code. And again, it's not, it, it was very much, uh, like just, just poke around and you can find how to do it. I, I haven't done much of it at all with C++, obviously, so I can't, I don't know a lot about this, but did anyone, I don't know, anyone have any thoughts or questions or anything? Go, go watch the advanced R video. Yeah. Practical knowledge. Yes, there's a lot, lot, lot more in advanced R, and then there's also, um, uh, this one. Efficient R programming has some stuff about C++ in there as well. Um, which maybe we'll do eventually, but I'm not sure that one's online. Um, Efficient R programming, is that the one by uh, Colin Gillespie and Robin Lovelace? It is. I think that one is online, actually. Oh, cool. Well, then maybe. Um, that one, I, I got a lot of little tips out of it when I was kind of first doing package development and trying to make some things faster. And then honestly, just learning S3 has <laughs> made my code way more efficient than all the little things I was doing before. Um, but yeah, that's an, a neat thing to have existing. Okay, so yeah, we've got the, the link in the chat. Um, I'm gonna open that up because I wanna put that link into the YouTube description so people can find it. Um, and actually probably into my slides just because I mentioned it. All right, so the other th other part of this, go back to that. All right, and then there are these other two chapters and very uh, like even more so than 14 and 15. These are the other ch other things. Um, so I put this learning objective again, basically, because what he points out in chapter 16 is also you can just throw anything else into inst. You can have these other directories that it could be whatever, like um, anything that makes sense to include into your package, then you can use system.file to load those things, whatever might make sense for your particular package. Um, he, he does this for scripts for other languages. Um, he does it for, um, I, I can't remember if there were a few other examples of things, but uh, it's just yeah, installed files. So, um, you could have documents, um, you could have um, more information about like copyright information, but a lot of it is if you don't just use the normal format. So I don't know, again, I've never had to use any of these things, but I can- You've never done any shiny case. packages, John. Um, CSS and JavaScript is often- Oh, no, nope, you're, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I've, I've totally done JavaScript. Um, I forgot all about that. So yes, that is what goes into inst. So um, yeah, 
that actually in JavaScript, like I don't think he has specifically JavaScript as a reference in here, but I'll bet you nowadays JavaScript is included as external code as much as pretty much anything else, if not more, because it's it just makes sense to have that code there to run it with your shiny app. Um, or it's a package stable too, in case it's, it's robust to like you can right. load JavaScript from elsewhere, but it keeps your package robust because it loads a specific version of JavaScript and yes. puts it onto your machine or whatever, or in your app or whatever, on, the, on library or on load or whatever. And yeah, we did it for, um, for an HTML widget for the uh, Arbert Viz package. So yes, I had forgotten all about that. Um, he also talks in here about citations that, by the way, the citation function tells you how to cite in our package. By default, it just, it creates a default citation. Um, and you can, <laughs> and it's funny because this function is newer than the book, but there's use this, use citation, which sets up this file if you want to um, have something more complicated than what's in the default citation, what it can just pull out of the description file. Uh, the example he gives is for Luberdate, and I checked, and Luberdate is still this format because they want to reference um, a specific paper in which Luberdate was introduced instead of just Luberdate, you know, just the normal citing it as in our package. Um, so there's that again, all of that. If you uh, if you have a package that's based on a or that is you know it's published in a journal, introduced in a journal paper, something like that, come to the book and search for citation, and it'll remind you where it was, or maybe you'll remember that this was in one of the chapters near the end. Um, yeah, that's all that. Uh, like we said, you can use, you can put scripts from other languages into INS, INST. Um, usually you would put it in like INST slash JavaScript or slash JS. It just has to be a folder name that doesn't overlap with one of the folder names for the package. So you can't have like INST slash R or INST slash tests because that would um, clash. Um, and then this, this last bullet is all of chapter 17 because there <laughs> chapter 17 is like, hey, there are these other components and don't use, or either don't use any of them or I'm, he doesn't go into details about how to use them. Um, the demo folder was for like the, the thing before vignettes. Um, exec uh, is for executable scripts. If you have a reason for them to exist. Uh, PO is and PO. I'm, I can't. I haven't figured out how that translates to internationalization. Does anyone know that? But it's for um, translations for messages, and that's actually pretty good. I could see some cases where I will want to do that eventually, but I've never seen that, and I don't know any details of how that works. I would have to actually go read the R extensions chapter to learn how. Um, I mean. The R extensions book to learn about that. Um, and then tools for like other external things uh, needed during configuration of your package. Does anyone have any examples? Have they worked or seen any things like that? Like I can't even, I've never noticed internationalization on packages, but I work in English, so I'm privileged in that way. I don't know if packages tend to do that. They, you know, ideally they should. Um, but it, yeah, I don't like, I've never noticed it. I'm wondering if it is in like the um, tidyverse uh, GitHub repos, but it doesn't look like it. So I think that's interesting. I see it in Luberdate. Ooh, that kind of makes sense because like it's working with time zones around the world and oh yeah, Italian, um, probably Korean. Yeah. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I wonder if you like other programming languages, their package ecosystems have these kind of very nuanced details to them, or is it just like well documented with R, or is it just like the carryover from S? It just seems like there's a lot of these obscure things, and I know this is the obscure chapter. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Like, oops, where are we? I wanted to check. Um, like he doesn't even reference anything in the official, um, you know, the R extensions manual about exec, for example. Like I have no idea when you ever use exec. Um, Yeah. It's literally, does Littler use it? Uh, no. <laughs> no. R. On touch. Like, I think everything that uses executables uses other ways of making sure they're installed on the system, but apparently you can put you know, bundle executables with your package, but I don't know how that would work from OS to OS. So huh. I don't know. Um, it's a yeah, I am. Object file. I'm very interested in the dot po stuff. Um, for work, like you know, all the packages I work on are internal. We all were working in English, but uh, especially some of the like um, language related packages that I work on, having them translated would be kind of right. Like they should be translated. So um, I might have to learn more about that, but it's not in this book. And in fact, I'll bet some of these references will go away entirely in the new edition of the book. Um, It'll be interesting to see. Like I would, I will hope, or I kind of hope that he will give at least an example <laughs> of what this was for. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know of any packages that have exec or tools. We should be on the lookout for that. And I checked. Okay, no. I was like, wait, does Lube, did Luberdata include all of them just to hit every folder? But no. Oh, uh, some some package down stuff can go in the inst as well, evidently. So um, that might be something that is used more. I package down is something I have not yet really wrapped my head or gotten into, which apparently is super easy and. We totally, you know, like it should be a normal part of package development, but it's not in the book, so I don't know how to do it. Anything else? Anyone have any questions, comments? Do, um, I can go back and go ahead and look at um, the documentation thing, Asma. I'm not sure exactly what you were asking about because I didn't notice the chat at the right time, but we can look at that. Right yeah, there. I think I misheard. I just missed the first part of the book club. So okay, yeah, I'll um, just rewatch. Thank you. Okay, no problem. The end. The end. I think. Uh, oh, and, and yeah, next week. Uh, you're up, right, Asma? Yeah, package yeah. down stuff. Yeah, so there's you know. Chapter um, 20 talks about like the CRAN process, but again, like I wouldn't, don't try to learn that. Just if you're releasing something to CRAN, load up that chapter and go through it point by point because that's the point of the chapter is it tells you exactly what to do when you're releasing to CRAN. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, maybe talk about it a little bit if you want, but that's not as important as I don't know anything about package down. I would like to learn more. <laughs> um 
then also, so also the next week, Wednesday, uh, Hadley is going to come in and talk to us during the day. Noonish. Um, let's see. It is at noon central. Um, so one o'clock Eastern, etc. cetera. Uh, there's a form for questions. Um, and that like before I was saying that was so I could submit them to Headley and then he said, I don't care, but it's so I can sort them and figure out like a logical way to ask them and not have to like stumble over and ask the same question twice. So if you can get questions in there, that'd be very cool. Um, if not, we'll figure it out. Um, he, he really enjoyed it last time. So that makes me a lot less nervous about it than last time. Um, but it should be pretty cool. And then uh, the other thing was, I think, you know, and then we'll be done probably for this year, but I would like to do a wrap up like we did for Advanced R where we kind of talk about things we've done. Um, I'm gonna like submit the Morpholex package to CRAN next week or so probably. So, or maybe I'll just hold on to it and submit it when we meet again after the break. Um, and it'd be cool to hear, you know, if anyone else has done anything packagey. So, all right. I will see everybody in the channel. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.